people have kidney stones, of course, and for many of them never get another one, and so they're not at very high risk, perhaps. But sometimes there are things in the patient's medical history or perhaps the kind of kidney stone that they've had which will predict that they are at a heightened risk for getting future stones. And so it's that patient population that we're mostly focusing on. Usually the definition for recurrence would be more than two stones in a five-year period. That typically is someone who's probably at a higher risk because there is some underlying mechanism that's forming their stones. Really all stones can recur, regardless of the composition. Uh, by far and away the most common kidney stone that we see in the general population is called calcium oxalate. And that is quite recurrent in many patients, particularly if they do have specific medical comorbidities, medical problems. Uh, so that's one that we deal with a lot in our clinic. What we've organized here uh, more recently at St. Joseph's is to have not only the urologist meet with the patient who is at risk for recurrent kidney stones, but also have a nutritionist available to spend time with them, speaking about dietary problems if those exist. And for the more complicated patients, we also now have the uh, access to a nephrologist who, in conjunction with the urologist, can help the patient uh, who has a much more difficult uh, situation to manage. Uh, ideally, we like to get some of the stones that they eventually pass uh, after their treatment so that we can analyze and find out what the composition of that stone is, because that can give us a lot of information about what direction we need to take in terms of the actual prevention. Uh, once we have that information, we then put the patients through some urine and blood testing, which gives us some additional information, and all that information then together uh, can be uh, used to inform us as to what the underlying problem was, and then secondly, how we're going to manage it. And there's a whole host of possibilities. It could be minor changes in the diet, such as having the patient increase their fluid intake, maybe reducing their protein, their salt intake. These are just some of the very common uh, things that we may discuss with the patient. But in some instances, it's actually not a dietary problem at all if there's metabolic issues, and perhaps we're talking about medical treatments, and so that I may actually be prescribing medication. It started when I was 18 years old is when I got the first one. Um, we've known since birth. Um, I was born in Quebec, and they test for cystinuria there at birth. So we knew right away, I just didn't have a problem with it until I was 18. So at the very beginning, before I had a specialist, it was like I was in the hospital constantly dealing with these stones, and there wasn't really much of a reprieve in between. But then once I was able to get in with Dr. Rasby's clinic, everything changed where they put me on some medication to help, which for me just basically means that I I have two clinic visits a year as opposed to multiple countless visits to the ER. I think it's a big benefit anyways. You're left in, not so much in the dark about it. You know, one of the things that the uh, dietitian said to me when I met with her was to maybe kind of cut back on eating too much meat in a week and salt. So I'm supposed to steer, steer away from too much salt, which is something I already did anyways. Um, and of course, then there's the water that they're going to tell you whenever you see your urologist, your nephrologist, or a dietitian, they're going to tell you, drink, 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 drink. You have to always have water. <laughs> um, Facebook actually was, it was my first protocol. I didn't really know where else to look and it was on a whim that I just happened to look up cystinuria and there was a group on there. It can get kind of depressing when you think of, well, I'm healthy now, but how long till I'm back here? It gets, it gets sad, so it's nice to have that support group there. And um, again, with the staff here that are like, okay, well, we'll get this under control for you. We'll help you out. We'll, we'll make you feel better. It's, it's fantastic to have.